Chris. And I'm Wendy. And welcome to the Toasted Marshmallow Adventures Podcast. <laughs> Today in the studio, and I should have asked you before we started how to say your last name. Okay. I believe it's Nico Lukoff. You got it. Ooh, awesome. Nice. Comedian Nico Lukoff. Thank you for being here tonight yes, uh, thank on you. the podcast. Being here in the studio. Oh, yeah. It's been a while since we've had oh, an in studio guest. Yeah. Yes. Crystal Moore. Woo. Thank you, Crystal. Yeah, that was uh, like the week before the Idaho Comedy Festival. Yeah. Awesome. She's yeah. great. Yeah, she's fun. <laughs> she made me want to be a clown. <laughs> yeah. She's really cool. Mission accomplished. Yeah. yeah, exactly. All right, let's get started. So let's start off with the Idaho Comedy Fest. Did you attend? I did not. You did not I was attend. Not a part okay. Of it anyway. okay. I was out of town for work stuff. Uh, heard about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Saw pictures and thought it look, looked like a really good time. Okay. I thought you were there for some reason. Yeah. No, that wasn't me. Huh? Okay. Super, super handsome, hairy, fat guy with the beard. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, and earlier today, you were like, is he that weird guy that talked to us? I uh, did say that. We went into the hallway. That, that, that kind of sounds like me, too. Yeah, but yeah. I don't think it was. It's not Yeah. <laughs> there was some weird guy, though. Yeah. yeah. I, I vaguely remember yeah. him. So, so. Whew, I'm glad. Yeah, you. exactly. So <laughs> we um, basically got hooked up with you. Um, you messaged us after you heard Dante uh, mention you in the Mixed and Misidentified episode. Superman. Um, yeah. Superman yeah. 206. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, and then that's how, uh, what prompted you to message us. Um, and that's... Uh, you are the. Sorry, I'll cut this out. <laughs> Please don't. This is fucking great. No, I like it. <laughs> I, I, no, you, I should have said I was totally, in that fest. I mean, like, I headlined yeah. that fest. And then sorry. You lost yeah, yeah, I totally <laughs> lost my track. Um, no, you we were, were just, just talking. Like, <laughs> yes. um, how do you know Dante? Well, that's he brought him up because question. of the Displaced Comedians okay, so Facebook you know page. Yeah. Yeah. Is that. Yeah. So actually, I met Dante uh, pre pandemic at an open mic in Tacoma, Washington. Oh, So I traveled cool. for work, like I was saying before the show here. Um, okay. And uh, he was, you know, at an open mic that I was uh, just walking around hanging out in Tacoma. So we didn't like hang out a bunch. I mean, that's yeah. when we talked. I said hello because we become Facebook friends. Because, like any or most new comics, I think you start seeing everyone in an area with the holding a microphone somewhere and their mutual friends start yeah, adding everybody, exactly. which isn't always the best move. But he did yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. like, oh, yeah, I know Sam. And we said hi. And, and then uh, and then we just, like like a lot of times, uh, it's happened with a lot of people that I just kind of reconnect on, on Zoom, regardless mm-hmm. of how that oh, initial relationship okay. was, just because. Um, a lot of people ended up gravitating towards that. Yeah. So cool. you zoomed with him? Yeah, yeah. Did some zoom. I was on one of his zoom shows. Oh, cool. um, that he did. Um, and uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. Yeah. And now, did you start the displaced comedians I page? Did. Okay. I start. I run it. I've had a couple of people in certain roles in it a few times. Um, but yeah, that's the thing that I started and did and I'm doing. When did you start? Um, so I started the group, it was April 12th of last year, 2020. Oh, wow. So it was- Like a month into the it pandemic. It was almost exactly a month since the last time I had done a live set, and that was at Tacoma Comedy Club. That okay. was when everything was shutting down. Mm-hmm. Like that Friday the 13th, I think it was the Friday the thir- there was Friday the 13th that week, and I was just like flying home from SeaTac like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> this mm-hmm. is real. Yeah. What's going on? What's going to happen? Can I get tested and just get off the plane? Because I was in Seattle, like where it was, yeah. you know, it was going to be coming through, but they're like, no, just go home. It's like, all yeah. right. And yeah. then, uh, and then everything just started shutting down. And then I was like, well, I had just started doing open mics. Oh crap. Oh no, that's cool. That's super professional. <laughs> it's, <all good. laughs> it's water something. Oh, look at Wendy. <laughs> This God is a damn relationship it! Thing. It's a relationship thing. A this is my moment to look at Wendy and notice any changes in her, any compliments I need to give. You're still because beautiful as I usual. Actually, like got piercings that he didn't fucking notice, <laughs> like piercings into my body. <laughs> but he just so, knows you for you and I the guess. you that he's loved yeah. forever. And just those I'll things the are just like, dude, right? could you maybe see me? Yes. <laughs> so he has Jeez. a look at Wendy alarm. Sorry. I, I do every night at like 7.50 p.m. Yes, so, so, you know, daily. Oh, I think it's great. That was fantastic. <laughs> this I think we should be a joke. You this can should make be, this, this should be what joke. we talk about for the next hour. <laughs> I just, about I'm with a bunch of weirdos on Zoom. You guys are like talking real shit here. Like yeah. real human things. Yeah. I guess. No, Zoom's been... <laughs> 
cool. It's been a really fun <laughs> <Yeah>. group. <laughs> Gosh. So Dante, he is such a character. We really dig him. We're, yeah, he's we're fun. going yeah. to Seattle just for a like fun thing. Oh, and cool. I want to look him up and just hang out. Yeah, we're gonna go see to if we can show. hang out and have a beer yeah. or something yeah, while we're there. Really yeah. Think he's a cool dude. Him oh, yeah. and uh, Joe Gomez. Yeah, 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 yeah Joe. Gomez. So Did that, you meet him? Yeah, yeah. So I knew him. So we when I started doing open mics, Tacoma was one of the areas I started doing them in. Okay. Um, and that's where I met Joe. And I met Joe at one mic and then we both went over to that same one to oh the, God, the the American. Cool. And that's where we started hanging out. I think he had started I don't know, seven, eight, nine months before that, maybe. I could be I could be wrong. But then yeah. we would we'd hang out and then when I when I would visit town, we'd connect and hang out and we, you know, go to different mics together. Um, and then everything, you know, shut down and then we connected some more on zoom and he was, you know, he knew I was doing zooms and I was messaging him about like inviting him to do stuff. Yeah. And then he did some, I did his podcast through zoom. Oh, cool. Um, and then when I found out he was going to be on Dante show that was coming up, I was like, hell yeah. So then made a night of that. Cause we had some yeah. great open mics on Saturday night also. So we did that show and I took him to a couple of mics and oh, nice. he crushed yeah. and, and there's a riff challenge at the last mic that we did at Mad Swede. So it was, that goes to like one thirty in the morning now on Saturday nights and he, he, uh, tied to win that and just had a oh, just had a blast cool. so we just, so it was just hours of fun comedy and hanging out we had dinner earlier too and oh, yeah he's, he's awesome he seems and really fun he's yeah. cool he's yeah. fun he's funny and and like three days or two days or so before that i was actually in tacoma at tacoma comedy club open mic where he was doing the light system there oh cool so he was, oh, uh, wow. lighting, lighting comics up and they were going over that was kind of fun sitting with him and watching like oh is this person gonna run it <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and several did yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> We kind of hooked up with him kind of randomly. Dante. We, yeah, Dante. Oh, we, that's, it's a weird. Through, uh, somehow we were linked up with this Ashton. new podcaster on Instagram. Yeah. And we were. Who no longer does it. Yeah, he only put out two episodes. Oh. Yeah. And, and we had uh, him on our podcast. And we were, you know, we're like, hey, you know, we reached out to him and said, hey, you want to be on our podcast? He was yeah. new, had like one episode out yeah, at the we time. Um, and he mentioned Dante, this before we had ever met him, mm -hmm. was going to be at the Idaho Comedy Fest because we had said we were going to be there and how they were buddies and to, you know, look for him. Yeah. Cool. And so, so we, did. we did. We had him and on the Dante podcast. Was like, I barely know the guy. Like, I don't really know him. We're not like, <laughs> What's <his> friends. Name? <laughs> <laughs> like so, but Dante is the cool thing out of that because this other guy stopped doing his podcast. <laughs> I know, yeah. right? Put out two episodes, but now we know Dante, and that's a cool, yeah, it's a really uh, cool connection. connection. And, yeah. um, we want to look know, up him and Joe. He's pro yeah. toasted marshmallow. Yeah, he is pro toasted marshmallow. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's always good. So, when did you start comedy? So, it was August 2nd. I think it was the 2nd of. 2019. Oh, okay. So pretty recently. Isn't it funny mm. how everybody ha knows like their date? I was. Why is that? I it's it's important. Uh, there's actually two different dates. Like is it the 12th or the second? I'm just guessing. But why do Pretty you even second. that roughly oh, know? Because you because you care. Because it's a, a little big bit. deal. It's the day you went. Oh shit! This is what I'm gonna do till I can't anymore. So how many <laughs> months or years prior do you think every com comic comedian thinks about doing that first open mic, or is it like a spur of the moment so, thing? So I think. More people take a long time to do it than I thought. I think when you start, mm -hmm. you think you're special. Like, I've been thinking about this for years and sending my friends clips, and now I'm going to be so much better. But da 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 da. Yeah. Not that I thought that exactly, but I was like, oh, yeah, I've been thinking about this a lot. I've been sending some clips to some friends and and getting some feedback. And they were horrible clips. I can't believe people talked to me. <laughs> <laughs> so really? Really bad. Really even compared? Like, were you the funnier friend, though? Um, in a lot of groups, the groups of shitty people, though. No, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I was always, I was the one cracking jokes. You yeah. know, we'd sit and we'd hang out and play poker for several hours. Then I would hit the the punchline. But what I didn't realize is they're giving me setups the whole time. Or oh, you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. that's what you hang with yeah. your friends. Your first friends. time doing stand, yeah. like I'm just so funny in a group or whatever. Like yeah, yeah but now you don't have that group. Now yeah. it's on you. Yeah, it's yeah. all on you. True. Uh, to make that happen. Um, yeah, it's intense. Yeah, it's because I think he's thought about. Trying. There have been times when you guys I, don't do stand up at all. No, 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 oh, no, shit. no. That's no, we're cool. we're huge fans. That's, I love it. I love it. That's I mean, great, we actually. we travel. I mean, we just went we to Salt Lake City to see yeah. Mark Maron. A couple months it. prior, we went to Salt Lake City to see Mark Norman. Um, yeah. Fucking Bobby Lee was going to be in Spokane. We're like, but he canceled. When you ever yeah, get to see Bobby Lee live. I was yeah, like, outside we might of see his penis. L.A. Yeah, he strips a lot. 
but yeah, so, I canceled. <laughs> went to Reno and saw Whitney Cummings. Yeah. And Taylor oh, Tom- cool. Sorry. Taylor Tomlinson. Yeah. Oh, gosh, she's so funny. Yeah. That wasn't we a great show. Wasn't... I think it was the location. Was I think because it? it's a casino. It's not and really a club feel. Needed. Taylor Tomlinson, is that what you're saying? Or... We loved Taylor. Taylor opened. Oh, yeah. Her, Taylor her and another and guy. And, uh. Oh God! I've just seen her Netflix, and that was just like, oh my God! I loved her. I loved her special. Yeah, her special. Nothing but awesome. the whole yeah. time. Yeah. Nothing but punches and just yeah. so yeah. fast. Yeah, we were. I think it was a lot. The location and the crowd, like Reno, it's going to be like a random. Yeah, and it was like a theater setting. Yeah, it was too you know, big. it was. Um, yeah. I mean, I think Whitney could probably comic, do a really big like, crowd. There were but... three people that went up, and they all did crowd work to like pull up the energy. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, they were really just. Yeah, doing and a lot Whitney of crowd work. Whitney at the end brought an old man up and like Frenched him or something. Um, let him oh, touch her boob. Her boob, yeah. Shirt up, yeah. Because his, yeah. Energy. Cause his wife had uh, <laughs> just passed away. Yeah. Oh, damn. <laughs> and she was yeah. trying to end on a high note. It was, yeah, it had, it's like, just, like boob low. touching, <laughs> and that's what she ended with. Yeah. The guy <laughs> grabbing her boob. Yeah. Yeah. Talking it on the We're podcast. Like, it was memorable. All right. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Seven fifty. Time to look. So, I think. I was hooked up with the Displaced Comedians page because... Oh, this is what Kurtz wants going so, to. Wait, 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 wait. Shit's going down. <laughs> going, because cooler. I believe, I think it may have been you put a link on probably the Boise Comedy Fans page. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's how I found that page and joined, you know, because I always, we're always looking for comedians or entertainers mm-hmm. to interview on the podcast. Um, now, and we can cut this out here. Oh, this is going to get good. But I was almost immediately contacted by Jolie RX. Oh, yeah. I'm not surprised at all. <laughs> what, she, was it right when you joined the group? Uh, pretty. When was pr- that? Within 24 hours. I have them. When I can, did you join Ish is what I'm wondering. Well, I can tell you by the message she oh, sent me. So, oh, this is um, fantastic. Okay. You're into this. All right. Okay. So I was sent a message uh, from her on June twenty second. So, oh, that's th- of this year. Yes. Oh, uh-huh. that makes perfect sense. <laughs> okay, let's. Oh, I want to hear about on. this beef. If you can What'd talk you, about what it, she sent you. Join um, the thing. We got a cool thing. If you want to be a part of it, a lot of weird words that kind of don't mean anything. She said, oh, "Hey, here. I saw you just joined a comedian group. I'm in. If you're looking for an open mic, I host one on Zoom. That's really fun. It's in its 59th week." Um, let me know if you're interested. It starts 7 p.m. Pacific. Um, I said, hey, thanks for reaching out. I'm actually not a comedian. I have a podcast with my girlfriend. We're interview slash chat with comedians. I uh, look like we have a mutual friend, Nathan Scott Ford, who has been on our podcast twice. I joined to find more com- comedies, uh, uh, comedians that would like to come on as guests. She said, oh, cool. We are a comedy collective. We built our own website to house our virtual shows during COVID, and then she gave me the link for rapid, rampantly yeah. comedians. We'll bleep that out because we don't yeah. want to promote her, right? That's <laughs> do whatever you want to do. So what I was so she that was a little more concise than I was anticipating. Okay, because a lot of it is a lot of more of the floaty stuff. That's like, what are you doing? We're a collective of da 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 da. da. What? Mm. Um, and everything I have to say is completely factual, so I have nothing to be worried about. Mm. Um, so whatever. Um, so that makes sense because I kicked her and her group out and blocked them from being from promoted your... from my group where that kind of spurred her group. Cause well, I'm not trying to like, there's no competition. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I can yeah. have five people in group. You get up a million. I don't care at all. My purpose was trying to like make something positive and fun and keep things going. So I'm not like trying to build, mm. bro, it's gotta be power, whatever. I don't give a shit. But I'm gonna run it how I fucking decide to run it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So so um so so right around June, I think it was June sixth or seventh is when I was like, look, um, everyone who runs your because because kind of the purpose of the the group was was, was started from just making a list of uh, Zoom open mics. I wanted people to go somewhere to mm. go. People to go. This is because when you do comedy and you travel or go wherever you go, the Portland comedy page and the Northwest book, like okay. all these different groups, and that's where I would do when I would travel for work and I'll join and I'll figure out what mics are going on. There was a there's a you know a list of badslava.com of mics that had some information, but some of that was a little outdated. So I'd kind of start there and zone in on you know zero in on what's actually still active. So you took around the country, well, uh, or was it just locally? Sort of. So when I did open mics live, it was I, I took the information and I just used it for myself to like oh this is the open mic that I'm going to go to. Mm-hmm. But then when 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 stuff shut down. I saw in different regions in those different groups, different people were doing different Zoom mics. And I went, well, yeah. one's doing them here. 
Two's doing them over here. There's someone doing them over here. Yeah. We need to collect this information like we had before. It's got to be centralized in some way in a live environment. It can't just be a website that's going to get stagnant because a new shit's going to change fast. Yeah. I don't want it to be lively. I want it to be people hanging out and be like, hey, let's just hang out well, and talk cool and tell jokes, idea. do workshops and play games mm-hmm. and all stuff. And it grew to these different yeah. things. And I started inviting a bunch of people. And at first it was like three or four of these Zoom mics a week. I'm like, how do I keep track of all these? Now yeah. there's, there became a ton. And at first I had them like on just a list on one post. So I wanted you to need to be in the group mm-hmm. to kind of have access, not to like block people, but just to kind of encourage the behavior of like, we're in this together. Mm-hmm. But then the page got so long or the post every time I edited took forever and it wasn't in a good format and easy to read. So then I made a Google sheet and was like, look, if you don't want to be in the group, we want to go to this. This is the link. I finally bought the domain because having that long link was just a pain in the ass. Uh, that just just points to the, this page. And then a lot of it was me collecting information. Like I'd see someone in some town doing a, a Zoom mic and I was like, all right, well, how long, like what's the important information? How long is the sets? Which it, not all these things are super credible, but just things mm. to know about how do you sign up? Kinda when is cool. it? Uh, yeah. How long are yeah. the sets? Are they streamed? I thought that was important because do you want your open mic shit streamed? Sometimes right. you don't. Some right. people do. Right. Yeah. Like who's hosting it? Where are they based? And people are like, well, it doesn't matter where it's based. And that's an easy joke to make. Like, ah, I assume. Well, it kind of did because you usually gathered. That's usually where those people had their audience and their scene and their group. Oh, okay. So now we got these people in these different scenes. You do a mic over in New York, you might have a different group of someone doing them, you know, based out of uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. Yeah. 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 So, you know, and then you now you have audience, like actual people who haven't heard your jokes before, even though most people on them are comedians. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But still, now you have different humans that you're engaging mm-hmm. with. Mm-hmm. And then we become this thing. And I was kind of interrogating all these hosts for all these questions. Some were like, Wait, we, are you getting paid? No. Is this all? No one's ever. Is... I mean, some people like, don't want to be uh, it's like a couple bucks because it was very nice to them, but no, no, yeah. never monetized wow. any of this. It's like podcasting. Yeah. <laughs> In a way, yeah. So far, yeah. Like <laughs> so this is the thing. I've got a good, a very fortunate knock on wood. I've got a great job. I think once you start charging for something like that or something like that, there's an expectation. Yeah. And now the expectation yeah. is people now know who I am. It just yeah. seems almost like you it. could have advertisers. I absolutely could. I got yeah. over 9,000 people there. People would pay money. Yeah. I actually mm-hmm. had someone reach out who, seems who, like a really who does awesome shows out of, out of a club in New York and is like, can I promote my class on your page? I'm like, look, you just do it the same way everyone does. Just post about it. Yeah. And yeah. people want, if people don't like your what you're doing, they're going to shit on it. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to stop them. But really, I mean, depending yeah. on the situation, I might jump in. But that's the thing. It's like, you know, yeah, someone like I think they were actually surprised I didn't charge money. I'm like if I charge money, then it sounds like I'm endorsing you. And I don't oh, fucking yeah. know you. I don't yeah. know what you're after, what your real intentions are. I'm just a fucking yeah. open micer who's wanted to have some fun and connect with people. And now I can now I get to go different places. Like last week, I was in Denver and to two different open mics and people that I had hung out with on Zoom. We're there. Oh, and I didn't even know. No, didn't cool. plan it. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah, and there are people cool. from like some people, uh, Kylie Troop, a comedian from San Diego. I met. She was doing a show in Denver. That's I mean, Andrew so Andrew Davis cool. who was on Zoom too. But Kylie, like I like I hung out on Zoom after like doing Zoom open mic. We tell jokes and we hang out. People are having drinks and just chilling because we're also just a bunch of weirdos yeah. in a weird yeah. ass time. A lot yeah. of people single. Like I'm married. Yeah. I've got kids. Yeah. A lot of people like don't have other humans yeah. to interact with. Not everyone has someone hit at 750. I'm going to look at you for a minute. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. not everyone has that. Nice call. Yeah. Yes. And uh, so it was really Jeez. cool to do all this. So, so I'll do this connection, all these things. At some point, there was this group that started called Rampantly from the individual who you just mentioned, uh, who, you know, sprang from that and started another group, which was kind of more like a, there's a visual way, like their website, you can see there's some gra- graphic interface to it. So there's some, it's a little prettier mm-hmm. and would, she, they would get people who were running mics already, zoom mics. And so, mm-hmm. A lot of zoom mics were based off of real life stuff too. Like this was a real life mic. They named it the same thing. Then it went on zoom because yeah. they had to find somewhere to go. Right. Some of them were just yeah. like, Hey, let's just pop one up. But this, there's history to some of these things. Yeah. And then yeah. she would, take them and convince them to be a part of their collective. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then to join their mic, you had to go on their page and then click through long list to get to the specific one. It was just frustrating for me because I want my purpose. My job was that I gave myself was to make it as easy as possible to set up for these things. Mm-hmm. So if you're one of like the 20 or 30 mics or whatever number they had that were in this group, in order to sign up for it, they'd say you have to click on a link to their website. Then you got to click a bunch of shit to try to find that specific uh, one. I'm like, that doesn't make it easier for anybody. Mm-hmm. Like, don't just tell me to go to that one page. So then I'd click through and they yeah. said, oh, go to the one page. And I clicked through and found the individual mic page. 
I copy and pasted that, but then that was dead because they refreshed it every week. So uh. I was like, God damn it. Okay, here, I'm giving you free advertising to your thing. They charge money to give you tape. They record everything and have rules that say, like, they own all the content. Oh, wow. I'm not saying I, I'm not saying what people are using that content for, but that's factual. And, yeah. and, and a lot of things charge for tape, like Flappers Comedy Club. I'm not trying to associate the two, but I, I, I've been involved with them just because I really liked what they're doing. They're, they were trying to stay alive during this time and they're yeah. doing mics and shows and like on paid, you know, showcases, they charge very small amounts. Sometimes they go like comp tickets for, but it's fun to engage. Um, and then, and then they also had like, you know, like headliner kind of shows too, that, you know, people paid more money for it and to try to keep, you know, to keep their business moving and yeah. keep comedy going. So I didn't, you know, shit on that for like someone go, you know, they'll allow them some, they'll allow you to pay five bucks to be on their zoom mic, or you can go for free if you want, mm-hmm. or, and you can pay some money to like get your tape from it or whatever. So like mm-hmm. I'm not just shitting on that concept. It's not a specific thing, but it's all these things adding up. And then they did an event um, where they were like, it's a 24 hour Zoom mic thing, mm-hmm. and they took all these hosts that were in their 24 group. 24 hours. Yeah, they were, doing, they were doing all these hosts that were in the group. Now I wasn't involved in the organization. It could be some off on some of these details, but they took. To my understanding, they took some of the people that were already in their organizations, other people too, like sign up to be able to have your thing. I'm making like this some big value for your thing. And let's have all these hour by hour things. And I did one of them because it was through the first Zoom mic they did. It was called the Panda mic. Uh, it's pa- spelled pandemic with a capital oh. N fun thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, Rachel Rothenberg was on. She's she's amazing. Uh, she's I think she's, she yeah, she did start to back up again. Uh, but she actually ran the first Zoom mic I went, I, I did. Mm-hmm. That's also went out to Tacoma like that I had known known from her life who had, had done her mic on there. That's where I got connected to it. But so on her version of that, when I closed that one out, it was really fun. It was like one in the morning. We had a good time. Um, and they did this whole thing. A lot of people had a lot of fun. We'll turn on a lot of the hosts. Um, we're just treated really poorly oh. <laughs> through the whole thing. And you get, you get kind of uh, just kind of just kind of treated like shit. And it turned out also that they ended up selling. The, so you see people ever post a joke about T-shirts in the group. Uh, she ended up selling T-shirts. And no, she didn't tell anybody about that. So like for a profit, like selling this merch of a thing that all these other people put so much energy into. It's my understanding all of those other people really did the work for oh. it and weren't seeing any of it. I don't think they were asking for it, but then they're also like shaming people like, oh, if you don't buy a shirt, you got to buy a shirt or we'll put your name on it. Because initially they're like, we're going to have all these names of all really? these things that are on it. I'm like, you got all these poor people. Not but you have people yeah. from every range yeah. and you're shaming my friends who are like, want to, you know, not have to decide do I spend $30 on a shirt or whatever it was or do yeah. I not? Wow. And that seems like a little thing, but that took, I was like, fuck that. You can't, I'm like, you tell me right now if you're, if you're actually going to take their names off of that. Cause I paid for a shirt because I want to, I thought it was a fun commemorative thing of my friends and people yeah. hang out with it. Then they, yeah. they kind of backtrack that and just weird shit from there. Heckling shows, harassing people. I, mm. I started getting messages mm. from people that they were just being really, really shitty to. Uh, and just really weird, kind of culty, clicky, like really strong yeah. in that mm. way to where they would end up saying to me that I was like, um, like I said, jealous of anything. Like, I don't, what do you have? Wow. No offense. Like, I'm not doing, but then I, but then I, I did post some things that that person posted in the group 1.0. I put them on uh, post approval. Basically, if you post something, I think it's a little shitty. I might delete it. I might hit you on post approval just thinking you might do that again. And yeah. And then they like flipped out saying that I was like blocking all these things. Oh, I'm like, no, I allowed every Jeez. post about shows. But then they're on their own page talking it's shit your, like the administrators of this group. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's like, you're trying to just it would, it have a fun. forum for like, comedians. Yeah. It's like that person shut us. I'm like, I've let every post about show on here. And then I'm like, look, guys. And then they messaged me very vicious things. And I was like, look, if you. I had a hard time doing this because I felt like the the people running those bikes were kind of like her human shield because I kind of I liked all those people mm-hmm. and did some of their bikes and I was like, look, if you want to promote your mic on this page, you're not going to have it through that page and you've got about a week or some time to take it down and and give me a link to whatever wow. format you're going to have it or I'm just going to take it off the page. You're not going to post about it here. Yeah. You'll find somewhere else. And I did that and they weren't very happy with it. So then that was early June. So then I found out later they started messaging new people in the group oh. to recruit them. They even used uh, like a fake profile like mm-hmm. a different profile name thing which i looked really yeah. closely and i realized it was kind of distorted picture of the same person um and they were actually messing me say we have plants and displays trying to recruit people i'm like yeah jesus christ first this is just this is this is this is weird like to call it that though like plants like that's we're just people Jeez. trying to tell jokes and i was like if you're doing that don't and that's then crazy there's some that other stuff crazy. i'm pretty sure they were doing and it's just like it and meanwhile, seems unhealthy. Yeah. It's really like, weird, why? though. To I mean, like what the you're whole doing is all positive. What's what I'm trying to do? Kind of full circle thing too, of like 
I joined the group. She messaged me. Dante's weird. on the podcast. I say the name. He's like, we don't want to talk about yeah, that. And then, here and then we are. have Nico. Yeah. Oh, so get you the brought fl- it up on the last one. I on um, the mixed and misidentified show. I was like, oh, I'm I'm in that group. I talked to someone named Julia R X. Yeah. And he's like, we won't we don't want to talk about oh, that I or thought, something like that. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. I thought somebody yeah. else on that pod. Someone told me that happened. But I thought someone else on the podcast mentioned that. That's really funny. No, I that's said that. Yeah. Really Awesome. It's a really crazy Weird. whole and, circle of things. And then during the whole time, I'm getting messages from other people like this, like really mean stuff they did that was way worse. Like, yeah, I, and weird, just weird stuff too to me. Like, I hosted a, I hosted a, um, I was emceeing a, a Zoom show that was like a professionally produced Zoom show. I was really yeah. stoked about it, and she came on and started just like doing weird cackling through people's setups and oh like that's the oh. that I just had her booted and I'm just like you know we what we will give her done zero <laughs> yeah her name and I gotta dropped. if anything was I have said, to unjoin her group are, uh, yeah. I mean and I tell people do what you're gonna do I don't do it, whatever uncool. makes yes. you happy I'm I don't too think busy that's doing the feeling other of stuff. comics, yeah. comedians the whole well I feel like if you're gonna that. start your own thing you need to start it you know, solely by yourself. Yeah. Don't try to pirate people from someone else's <laughs> group, you know? Yeah. So, you know, start yeah. it up. Do and if you're thing. good, people like will join. And comics and comedians support each other. That's the whole cool thing yeah. is like everybody's for everybody. Yeah. Like, because when we start really talking to comedians, we were like, oh my God, we found our people. You yeah. know what I mean? Like people that are, they have some shit, but they're fun and funny. Yeah, and accepting. And, yeah, yeah, accepting. Um, yeah. yeah so. I've always been a stand-up comedian fan. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and so no, I, I, I actually know. kind of introduced yeah. you really to it because prior to that you or like bill cosby, bill cosby yeah, yeah who's out now and yeah. is there's rumors he's, he's gonna, gonna tour, tour. <laughs> he's gonna try i'm sure I mean, do you think go? he's gonna be somewhere do we know. go uh, no 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 <laughs> we don't go. I, I, I don't want to pay the money to let's I talk sure. about bill cosby <laughs> i saw him six months before we found everything out no really yeah, yeah. It was the first time i saw him uh my wife got tickets for my birthday we we're so excited he was oh, actually here God. in boise and That's he said some awkward saw. shit. It was really. I'm not, I'm not one of those. I About do. Jello? But like, no. But just some <laughs> weird stuff. But he's also when an you're older past too. Them, so he's sitting I down. Jello all yeah. You. No, just some weird creepy stuff. That was like, oh, that makes a little more sense now. Okay. At the time, did it your spidey sense? A little. Go but away? it was like that was yeah. My wife and I were like that was a little weird. Like it was a legend. I'm glad we saw him. But I have no interest. I just don't care what he has to say. I know. Mm. Where'd awesome. you see him at? So uh, yeah, B- uh, BSU actually. Oh BSU. Yeah, yeah. The old pavilion. That's where I saw. And um, well, I was I was happy to get to go see him. I'm glad I saw him crazy. before all that. That's crazy. Because of course I thought he was great and hilarious and wonderful, like so many other people did. Wow. Um, I mean, it was probably the first stand-up comedy I saw was like Bill Cosby yeah. himself. Yeah, as himself. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah as hilarious. himself. Yeah. yeah. And I remember I great. we had it on VHS in my house because I think my parents were like He's super clean. into it because it was yeah. clean comedy, yeah. you know. I think he says one cuss word in yeah. it. And he says like ass or yeah, something. Yeah, like, like the line so, about the Yeah, that's a little yeah. uh, stretching well, it. You know, and makes out your personality. What <laughs> if you're an asshole? Yeah, that yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the joke. Dang, what did you think? Six months later. Oh, when? I was. Just, it's like, like everybody, I was like, holy shit, this is just crazy. It's like I was crazy. sad and confused and bummed and just everything. Like yeah, so horrible for all those people and yeah, insane. Yeah, yeah. While we're talking about legendary comedians, <laughs> uh, Norm McDonald. Yeah, let's yeah. talk about Norm oh, McDonald. Oh my God! So yeah, at sixty-one, he didn't tell so anybody. Young. Nobody knew. That's I listened so... to uh, um, Adam Carolla today. Did a Norm like whatever tribute. Yeah, kind of thing. and Rob Schneider called in, and he was like, he was one of my really good friends. I had no oh. idea. He said that wow. like four years ago, though. They were um, on stage together, and when Rob got off, Norm was actually asleep in the auditorium or either, like, the area where people will walk out. And uh, so he helped him up to his room, and he's like, Norm's a big man because Rob's short. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. And he got him up to the room, and he said, I've had so many friends, like, die from drug overdose that I went into the bathroom to see (laughs) if anything was going on. And he said, and that's when I realized he was dealing with something. But Mm. he kept it a secret as well, which is 
Oof. Amazing. Crazy. Jeez. Today, yeah. while I was home, I watched most of one of his specials Aww. on Netflix. Yeah. And we haven't seen it yet? No, okay, we we're had, super it's, it's it was um Sorry. no we had Sorry, started it. it it had like a ten okay. minute little play thing bad. into it. it was what, only a few years 61. ago. Yeah, which yeah. one was it? Yeah, it was I think it was 2017 yeah, is when it was great. from. Yeah, and it was funny. I mean, it has a slower cadence, but uh, it was there was some pretty funny stuff. I mean, have you guys listened to this podcast? No. no. Oh my god, it's so funny. Re- oh, is it really? It was on YouTube oh. also. And yeah. it's have to so now. funny. He has a, a show on Netflix also that was kind of based around it. Uh-huh. Well, I think it was like um I think How it was like Norm Macdonald's show. Podcast? The podcast if I had to guess sometime within the last ten years, I could be wrong. Okay. Mm-hmm. But there's I think there's several seasons of it. He's interviewing guests and he does bits. And he just goes, and they don't know. They don't get that he's fucking nice. around. Doing a bit. And he just yeah. keeps going. And it's so norm. <laughs> oh, I love Because he, he, do he doesn't go like, ah, yeah, making a joke. Like, no. are you kidding right now? And he just dismisses yeah. yeah. completely and just keeps I going. Just because he's just, all he cares about is being funny. Yeah. And you could agree or disagree with anything he says. I don't give a shit. Yeah. He was yeah. among the funniest humans ever. Yeah. And fucking yeah. is Amazing. very sad. Amazing. Uh, yeah, I was watching one of the clips of his, all his. Um, letterman interviews oh yeah because right when i found i was just like i just want i need to watch something yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. gotta watch their dirty work again yeah um oh crazy. god what was i gonna say about that oh i guess his significant other said in a statement that the number one thing he hated was pandering in any version so like yeah actually telling people that he was ill what how he responded would have been a pandering to yeah him. Which is yeah, that makes that's him. I I get it. It's sad though, because yeah, he was really cool. Yeah, and his jokes were like when I was watching that special today, and it's kind of like really just seeing him through the years from Saturday Night Live. You know, he was there in like the Chris Farley and David Spade days, um, and his jokes are still like in that 2017. They're like almost like these very simple jokes, but with I don't know. He knows how to deliver. Yeah. They're simple with a little complexity to them, and he can just deliver and get the laugh off of. Apparently. You know, one of the punchlines was like, ah. You know, he's talking about the desserts. (laughs) I started watching that special, and then I didn't. I wasn't. And this was before I'd started doing stand up. So I, my wife's kind of peeled away at me in the sense of like trying to draw the humor out and which is so bad because like there's so many years of great jokes that I've missed out on because I couldn't take a joke for a very long time oh. so way too serious I still did goof off yeah. but like still so it's weird so I didn't so that was around I think kind of when I was starting to be like it was starting to unlock and some of his stuff I was like I don't think I don't know I don't not that in this and then I watched his podcast I'm like oh I get it now oh, yeah God, I have and to then see I that. went back and watched that special I had no idea. and rewatched what I had started then watched the whole thing I was like it's oh totally holy different. shit this is incredible yeah wow. it's um, crazy yeah I forgot what I was gonna say <laughs> if it comes to me I'm just gonna blurt it out okay, okay. sweet you should that's what we're doing <laughs> so you started. Seven months before the pandemic? Yeah, thereabouts. Yeah. What made you, what, well, yeah, what, what led up to that? So, I mean, so I was saying before, I mean, there's probably a good year, maybe a little longer. I was just sending some just clips of just stuff that I was saying that I thought was funny to some friends trying to think up some things to say. I had a weird experience growing up where, um, so I tried to, I was trying to tell a story and I still am working on that today in different ways where um, I got busted in high school for selling weed because you're not supposed to do that there is yeah. one of the lines. <laughs> and then it goes into this thing where I haven't dove into some of the meat of this, like the, all the meat of this. Basically, I got busted. I went to juvenile hall, got a probation. I failed probation. And then I got sent to all these programs. Mm. And I don't talk about the specific <clears throat> programs and the bits because I haven't written them all out to where they're funny yet. But I got sent to like this, these wilderness programs. You get hiking oh, around and stuff. Yeah. And You're one I, of those And then guys. I got sent to, the, uh, to Samoa. Western Samoa. Yeah. Those Whoa. are wow. fairly appropriate faces. <laughs> and these, I was there with people that were like, d- d- dudes like, I used to sell cocaine for the mob. One's like, dudes like, I used to shoot heroin. One's like, I shot a dude stealing a car. And one yeah. guy's like, all these things. I'm like, I smoke weed. You're like, oh I just God. sold an eighth to my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of the bit, too, is just like how, how it was so overboard and how ridiculous yeah. it was. Wow. And how I was the least popular kid in rehab because, like, that yeah. was, that, was just... that guy. And, um, <laughs> 
So I was trying to tell a story. I was trying to tell that story. And uh, about, it's bizarre. It's weird. And yeah. not, not most people don't have that story no. to tell. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the the part that I was trying to tell at the end, which I still work at, is basically I got out. And then I had I, like, I had some guys that worked uh, talking. I worked, I worked to this at Mount Bachelor in Bed, Oregon, oh, cool. uh, flipping burgers. And, uh, and I heard a guy tell another guy that, like, he just finished rehab and he was, like, excited. I, like, heard them, like, oh, shit, let's, like, talk about it. And I'm talking about how I was also in rehab. Like, you want to talk about it? And then he told me that, like, he hurt his foot snowboarding and he was in physical therapy rehab. Mm. And then that was just a connection to the kind of joke I was trying to make out of that. Like, I was all excited to, like, connect to this person. He was in rehab for freaking injuries. <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> and then, then uh, and, and and that was kind of the end of the bit. And so I was trying to do different parts of that. I thought it was a fun story. And um, it was just one day I was uh, I was in Portland, Oregon. And mm-hmm. I was like, I told myself if I could find somewhere tonight that will let me tell jokes, I'm going to go to a comedy open mic. Mm-hmm. So I was finishing up dinner and I was looking at my phone. I just Googled comedy club open mic. Portland or whatever, and like it said, helium. Like I don't even know what oh helium my was. God. Like, yeah. What's this? You went to the helium. So I was like, "What's this?" And it said, "It says something like you get three to five minutes at an open mic." So I'm like, "Okay, it's so a long to time hotel. for your first time." So. So yeah, to my hotel. Don't worry, I had plenty of time. I did it. So I, yeah, I went to my hotel. I was rehearsing. I'm like, okay, I think I, there's five. This if I got five minutes of this story, these stories to tell. Hmm. And then um, my wife and I talked to my wife a little about doing did this. She so go? No, she was she was a she was at home. God. Um, and I was, I was on the strip for work and, uh, and I was like, she had always told me like, write it down. I'm like, no, no, I'm just thinking it through. I know I'm, I'm writing and thinking, she's like, write it down. She did theater in high school and stuff and, and into college. And she, I'm like, nah, I don't need to do listen. that. No, I don't. <laughs> Idiot. So I go, um, so earlier that, yeah, so, so I go, sorry, I go there and I go and I sign up and I, I've been told and I saw on their website, like, if you write that you're new, like there's a better chance of getting up. Cause apparently a lot of people want to go oh, up there. No. Um, and I thought about not doing that cause it gave me myself an out, but I did, <laughs> yeah. I'm busy and I'm yeah. new, whatever. So then I go and then, um, and then they said the list is out. I'm like, where's the list? I thought it'd be like in big, bright, like somewhere yeah. really lit up. It's never like that. It's like this <laughs> dark corner of a bar. Uh, yeah. Everyone's looking at it all cool. Like, little little handwritten that I see my name like oh, fairly towards God. the top. And then I see it call three and I'm like, I'm third. But then a lot of people have three. I'm like, is that, that's three minutes. Oh, I'm like, no. And I'm like, oh, no, I have five minutes. I didn't. Uh, <laughs> how do I do three minutes? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, so then um, I uh, called my wife, told her what I was doing. And then I told her, I asked her, which story is funnier? Like, which, which one's funnier, uh, crackhead or work story? One's got to <laughs> go. And work story is what I capped with. And then I started pacing down the street like a lunatic trying to rehearse and memorize oh those. Oh, wow. Come up down different lines to try to change these things up to provide context <laughs> okay. to the end story. And um, and earlier that day, so I, I, sell, I said earlier, uh, I sell machinery. I don't know if it was on the show. I said I sell machinery that's used in different businesses. Breweries were one of them. And I just talked to a dist- met some distributors that day who sell our equipment with their own equipment. And I had just met them. We had emailed and talked to the phone. met them in person that day. And we were going to go out to dinner. So I texted him like, hey, uh, we went out to dinner. Uh, how about this? Let's go to this place called Helium Comedy oh. Club. <laughs> and, oh, no. And they're like, cool, dope, let's do it. And they show up. I'm like, all right, guys. So here's what's going to happen. <laughs> here's what's happening. Things go get changed. us a table. <laughs> While you're having dessert. Get some drinks <laughs> or food. And I'm going to see in a little bit. You're going to see me try to stand up for the first time oh, in my life. no. Wow, you invited and they were like, friends. Oh, oh shit. And it, here's what I thought. It was like either I'm gonna it's gonna go horrible. Yeah. Or it's gonna yeah. go great or someone no matter what, we we're gonna have an experience oh and we were fucking God. bonding that night. Yeah. And uh wow. and the host, the Shane Brendan, he's super funny. He went up and so he was in the he's in the green room and I go in there, say hi, introduce myself. He's like, Oh, is this your first time? I'm like, Oh, it's my first time ever doing comedy or trying to do this. He's like, Oh, cool. Then he does his opening set, and I he could have said this without me saying that, but he was like, "Hey, uh, you know, he's just he didn't say be specific, but he's talking about it. Hey, everyone, if it's your first time trying comedy, maybe you don't do it like a packed comedy club. Oh, maybe do it. No. In, all these things. I'm like, oh, he's just feeding. Like, oh, this is so great. Yeah. He's like, maybe you think you're funny around the water cooler. You're watching Netflix special. You think yeah. you're funny. Maybe try it at some bar somewhere. I'm like, oh, thank you. This is perfect. Set me up. <laughs> and the next comic went up and I went up and I did my thing. I started by calling it back to that. Just like, I'm that guy he was talking about. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> and then I did my set and it was, and it felt amazing. And, uh, did it wow. go okay? Uh, yeah. I mean, for my first time not writing anything down, I think it went pretty good. Wow. I mean, I think sometimes to your first time you get some more, you get a little more love when they know. Yeah. Like, everyone's, you're connecting more. 
Um, but yeah, it went, went pretty good. You know, got laughs, had fun. And then I sat down and just started having drinks. And then at the end of it, and I did touch on getting sent away to like a third world country. I was trying to tie that in. The last comic who ended up was named Adam Posse. Um, he had just won Portland's Funniest oh, cool. um, Person or Comic. I think it's Person. Yeah. Uh, Portland's Funniest Person a few days before. I didn't know what that meant at all. <laughs> and then he was talking about he. So he's half Samoan. Then, then he was done. He went when the whole show was over. He went to the he went to this bar in the back, and I said hi. And introduced myself. I showed him a tattoo of my leg. I got I got from art I, that I brought back from Samoa and got the tattoo in oh, America. Cool. And I said, hey, I don't know if you heard my said he had heard some of it, and he gave me some feedback. And he said, um, and I said, oh, so that place I'm talking about was actually Samoa. I lived there for a while. He's like, oh, I he's like, he's like, dude, I've never been there. You're more Samoan than me. Oh. <laughs> and, and I was like, that's such a fun thing. Yeah. And then he goes, that's crazy. and then he's talking to me and the guys I was hanging out. He's like, Hey guys, I'll see you in a little bit. Um, I'm going to say hi to some people. I thought I'd never see him again. That'd be fun. He came back and he goes, Hey, you guys want to go on another open mic? Oh. Yeah. It's like, Oh shit. And then I went, same go? night yeah oh. wow. horrible oh. horrible <laughs> yeah it was it's called uh, it's called lamp it's a, a small it was a small bar that that, that that mike doesn't go on anymore and there were a lot of the, the best a lot of the best comics that went up that night and other comics were there mm. and met some awesome people but it was just about doing it yeah and having yeah fun. yeah and then uh and then afterwards he invited me like we went to hang out at the like the, the clinton house where like a bunch of the comics live in mm. portland to hang out so i got like just the craziest oh, fun night. Cool. So I'm hanging out with all these comedians that I met all night, all the bartenders and everybody. Eventually I had to leave because I had to go do some work stuff in the morning. But I was like, yeah, that was incredible. <laughs> and uh, it was really cool. fun. What does your wife think? Uh, she's, she's down? Yeah, she, absolutely. She's supportive. Oh, nice. I mean, I try to limit the number of nights a week I leave. Yeah. So that was the yeah. thing is because I was already gone for work. So I can either stay in my hotel, watch Netflix or whatever, or I can like go out because I'm super extroverted and just go out and just yeah. work on telling jokes. Also, it was a little safer because once I got, in, you know, I got into cool, some, some neat scenes. I had really great audiences and, mm-hmm. and get to meet cool comics. Then I'd come back home and not do that and just mm-hmm. kind of work on what am I going to say next and work on writing. And my wife helped me with some of that, too. She's written some of the best lines. Um, Is she extroverted? She'll say she's not. No, I mean, not really. Balance. Yeah, yeah. Somehow. She she needs her her time. She needs yeah. her 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 downtime. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You don't have. You go to see people yeah. to recharge. Yeah, and like Chris and I, introverts. Clear yeah, of people. We, yeah, to yeah. recharge. I'll just keep. I'd going say our I podcast is the most extroverted thing yeah. we do. <laughs> you know, so. yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, for so, reals. Yeah, and so she she probably balances you. Like if you're super, you said you were super extroverted. Yeah, as much That's, as they come. Um, yeah. yeah, extroverts they come. Are you from here? No, I grew up in San Jose, California. Oh, San Jose, yeah. okay. I'm from go. Vallejo. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. So that's when I was I went to Oak Grove High School, and that's where I got kicked out. And then I just and then I got to, to another school for a little while, and then failed probation. And then I've I've never been back since I was like 16. Mm. I've been back to visit, but like my, my parents don't live there or anything anymore yeah. but then i ended up going to these programs my last one program i was in was in uh bend oregon and that's where i ended up meeting my wife mm. shortly after oh, cool. oh okay. so we bend, that's where bend. you want to live that's weird it's uh yeah. it's it's what not weird think? to want to live there it's fantastic yeah. but i mean it's weird that you just oh. brought that up <laughs> ah, if places that are close yeah. by it's that's it's a it's a destination it's a really cool spot it really is yeah, yeah. how'd you end up in idaho um so i had a so we were going to college at, uh, in Ashland. And just couldn't really afford to live there without in student housing. Um, and I had a distant cousin, relative person, I guess, was, <laughs> who like had a potential job and a house for rent here. And it didn't work out to rent from them, but we just kind of moved anyway. And it was affordable and found a job. How and many just, years ago? Oh, geez. So we moved. So we had just gotten married. So it was early 2004. Oh, okay. Um, when did you move? Know. I'm, I've been here since um, 93. I think I've been here. I think it was. Sim- similar. Similar time. Yeah, it was. Because yeah. I got divorced, I think, in 2006. So I had been here probably about two years. Yeah. So, yeah, I might have been here around time. the same time. Yeah. yeah. We, From we, Vallejo. I don't know. We, yeah, we were in Boise. And then we were and then, and then we were renting. And then we, need, we were going to buy a house. You know, we couldn't afford anything in Boise. So we bought a house in Nampa. Yeah. And then. We ended up buying a house in Redmond, Oregon, because oh, cool. that's where our, par- our parents live. It was cool when we had it, 
and then we uh, I, I started a company. I was selling hops to breweries. Mm-hmm. I, was, I started just as a hobby thing, and it grew and just you know doing different broker broking deals that you know made a full time career out of it mm-hmm. uh, for a while, and bought our house and had property and horses. Uh, my wife always grew up with horses. She grew up in Haines, Alaska. Oh, I'm from Juno. Oh, no what kidding. The fuck? <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Where is Haynes in relation to very Juno? Very close to Juno. It's is southeast. It, uh, oh, yeah, you don't okay. find that. Yeah, yeah uh, White Fang was filmed in a in like a made up town that called Dalton City in her town. Oh. Her oh. mom like did housekeeping at the hotel where Ethan Hawke was. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Damn. You have to tell her hello from oh, me. Well. Yeah. From Juno, Alaska. <laughs> Haynes was like where. Um, so if you were in Juno in elementary, you would go on like a ferry trip. That was like your little class thing in elementary school. A little school. field trip? We, we went yeah. to Haynes. On a ferry, yeah, damn. Petersburg, and yeah. Oh, my God, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> is, she, she's, uh, is she white or uh She's, she's or? white, but she's, she's, she's a little dative, too, but she's... Okay, cool. Um, Eskimo or... Uh, no, um, Kalapuya is what she... Not 100% certain on some of these things, but just do not great records of things yeah loose um, association but she but she like wasn't like her parents weren't from alaska oh, okay they actually were from oregon oh. and moved to alaska um and uh and then we tried to open up a brewery and then we got conned by this asshole who was actually uh was stand was supposed to stand trial for wire fraud right before the pandemic Damn. not against yeah. us just because what he did with the, through us was quote civil um, so there really wasn't anything we could do but sue, but then he just doesn't pay and like he can't do anything. Mm. Uh, but then that kind of took down our business and our home. And then we moved back. Luckily, we still own our house in Nampa, so we've been back there for a few oh, years. Yeah. yeah, so we still have somewhere to go. Yeah. Wow. So you have seen the massive changes around here. Oh, yeah. Like the traffic in the last couple of years. Oh, yeah. my It's like, God. holy shit. I Coming can't from California, it. yeah. Well, when I first got here from California, and I would go, awesome. and I would drive. I was like, "This is kind of relaxing kinda to drive your is. car," you know. Yeah. Like, go out, and there's no one's on the road. I moved from driving. Seattle, and I was like, one time there were like cows at the Meridian exit on the freeway, and I was <laughs> yeah. like, everybody stop, nobody died. Now definitely it's we'd all be fucked dead. Up now. Yeah, it's really <laughs> God, bad now. Yeah. So you, yeah, you've been here a long time. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> What's your best show you ever had? You and know, where? So, you know, I'm just an open micer. I've been booked on a couple mm. live shows. Um, yeah. I would say the best set I think I had was in the Tacoma Comedy Club at Amica about a month or so ago. That week, okay. Where when, when Joe came that week here. Um mm-hmm. Uh, just had a lot of fun. Everything clicked. I was I had fun talking. So there's another comedian, Todd Royce. Um, who you should know, who's in the Seattle area. He's oh, cool. super hilarious. We um, should look for him while we're uh, there. Yeah. yeah, hit me up when you go there. I'll yes. say a bunch of people. Cool. Today. Okay. Um, and so he's he's a, he's a I'm, I'm not a little gentleman. He's a little larger gentleman. Mm-hmm. We both had the exact same shirt from Walmart, oh, but just no. different sizes. <laughs> yeah. So he came up to me. He's like, "Dude, I didn't know it was that shirt." And then <laughs> so he and he went up a couple cents before me, so it was perfect. Yeah. So I still got to call back and talk about. Like, no, it's not just Todd Royce doing another set. <laughs> both got and we talked. So I talked about the shirt a little bit, and then I did nice. told some jokes mm-hmm. that I've been working on, and and just whole just doing the timing zoom to live is so weird because the timing is so weird i could talk yeah that. we could you could do a whole podcast on just di- like there's several a delay, right? like episodes of, the delay is different so there's delay in real life where mm-hmm. there's real energy happening yeah. in the air we're like oh now it's hitting this person it's kind of like rolling like a yeah. wave but then on zoom it's like oh did you not laugh because my internet's fucked up yeah, it's Are like you, it's like frozen? is this thing on, or is it, or is it because um, there was just a delay? Because some zooms for some reason I don't know what I can yeah. go to one. I've done zooms where I do like do like do like five or six in a night, and jump between them, and the timing's different on every single one. Yeah. And is it because everyone's staring at their camera, but they're really just messaging each other? Because <laughs> right. there's a fucking I do a, be, I do a yeah. bit about a chat. There's a chat on Zoom. People can just type messages. Yeah, which is yeah. Cr- and I do a bit about that because I had a little heckle thing in a chat. I made a kind of a fun connection thing. <laughs> Try to make that work live, but it doesn't quite yet because it doesn't yeah. as much. Um, there's a lot of differences. You know, I've had people laugh. We can see them looking right at them. And then I'm like, have you laughed at that? You would probably laugh at this. And I'm like, what's happening now? Because you're not. <laughs> and that was only because. 
uh, your friend just got kicked out of Zoom because they thought they were the heck or they weren't, but they're the only audience member. And it was just like all this <laughs> horrible shit. But that, yeah, my best, I would say that I can recall live was at yeah, Tacoma Comedy Club about a month or so ago. Just had a lot of fun. Awesome. Worst. Um, so that would have been at a bar. I think it's in Oakland. Was it Oakland? Oakland. And um, <laughs> I, had, I had, so it was pre-Zoom. So I'd done so pre-pandemic. Know, yeah, you know, 10, 20 sets or something. And I just stood up and I talked for five minutes or four or five minutes, I forget the set length. Stuff that I felt like I had worked on that was good and yeah. the reaction oh, that was funny. God. And it was silence. Oh God. And it was wow. just the worst feeling. And that's where like I questioned everything about my Your whole life. life. Yeah. Uh, and so I went up like some more things working against me. Yeah, I didn't do a good job. I know that. But like but, the, the 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 you know, I was I went up first in this environment that I went to a mic the next I was telling someone and they just weird people was like, Oh yeah, that's just a really tough one. And I don't mm-hmm. think they were just saying that to kiss my ass, but like there yeah. are some show, some scenarios and settings that generally just hard. takes more work. That doesn't yeah. mean that's bad because if you get a laugh, it's worth more. It's the yeah. currency of the room is the way I think about it. <laughs> yeah. What's that laugh worth? You've been in some rooms where someone will laugh when you say almost anything. Yeah. And it's true. like, that's fun, but like, wait a second. I could, that's, I'm not getting better. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so, so do you prefer those tough rooms? I don't know. <laughs> I like, I mean, I like I a think balance. It's true. Yeah, I think yeah. That's how you get better. Yeah, it's but crazy. yeah, I mean, yeah. But I mean, if time. everyone's laugh, laughing at everything you it, say, like 10, 10, that, that you're like, not getting yeah. better. But but mm-hmm. but going to ones I like. So I really like um, the ones I tend to do in town are Mad Swede. Usually the downtown beer hall. Mad mm-hmm. Swede um, usually have a. It's an attentive audience. Just... Is that where I broke a glass? <laughs> it's where you it's broke those a tall, glass. skinny glasses. Oh, oh those are dangerous. There. Yeah, I uh, she went to clap there. and fucking I just fucking knocked her drink like over. Saying, the whole thing shattered. I mean, oh, she shit. was being supportive of the comedians, <laughs> but really she was. broke her fucking She's beer like, all over the up. goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> yes, That's exactly. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And, and like, then we all danced on it, and it was over. <laughs> well, I mean, those tough ones. Yeah, it was is obviously it makes you better, but. It is fun to just have an attentive. If it's funny, people laugh. If it's not, they don't. Yeah. And, yeah. And then you so. learn, you can change. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and then gauging those things and, going, okay, well, you know, what really got the stronger part of that? What really was going on? And it's weird because, like, whatever you feel right after you get off stage, I think, at least my opinion right now, is it's always not. It's generally not accurate what happened. Okay. Yeah. Which is fine. You're negative? Yeah. Or like, either way. Oh, okay. oh, it was great. Well, some... It's, it's not always it's a generalization but like sometimes it is like and then listen oh that was pretty good i guess and then some yeah. but she always be critical though like okay where could that get better because mm-hmm. that's what i want to do is just get as good as i can and and by putting in as much work as i'm willing to put into it mm-hmm. and have fun goals that's a great question <laughs> our word i mean i know, I know what you meant <laughs> yeah so it's weird because like what i love to someday do this professionally like if someone could guarantee me that i could support my family forever yeah. doing it sure yeah. is that gonna happen yeah. eh, i'm not gonna say no but come on like i like I, I think it's fun um i think i'm decent i think i have the potential to get as good as anybody's been of course but Why not? um i just really enjoy having fun and doing it as long as i'm enjoying it i'm gonna keep doing it and see how yeah. far i can get i would like to become at a level where when we got people coming to town that I'm per someone that gets asked, Hey, are you available to do, you know, the feature for this person or whatever? Yeah. Do do twenty minute, thirty minute set, maybe at some point a headlining set, but probably not like a traveling headliner. Yeah. You know? Have you met um, Nate Ford? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh cool. Yeah, we hang out at a bunch of the mics. Oh, he's nice. awesome. He's fun. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Um we've had him on twice on yeah, our podcast. He's a cool yeah. Dude. We were on the really we cool. did a mic we did a mic a couple of weeks ago together at the Mad Suite on Sunday night. Saturday night. They'll do like a riff challenge type thing, and it was Christmas. Mm-hmm. So he went on because uh, going off about uh, about people thinking he's Santa. Yeah, I was gonna say. And that. then I did a bit because I've done bits where he's gone up before me, and I've said I've been Nate for uh, twenty beers ago, <laughs> or things just tying back to him. Yeah. And then um, and then I did a bit just kind of tying into it, like I was pretending to be his dad. We did a whole thing, <laughs> and uh, no, he's he's great. He's fun and funny. He's a and, cool yeah. Guy. And, um, and he just quit his job. Yeah, Woo! yeah, yeah. I remember he's, he's been Speaking of Nate, yeah. and he. Oh my I, God! Tomorrow night. 
What? He's an op- opening for Creed. Creed from Bratton office. from The Office. Yeah, yeah. at the oh, Revolution awesome. Concert yeah. House. Yeah. I was speaking to my coworker that has recently started comedy, uh, Natasha. Do you know Natasha Bowles? I think she's a new open micer. I don't know that last name. Does she use a different last name? Bowles, B-O-L-E-S. I don't know if she does a comedy. I've never watched her, um, but she's a coworker of mine. And she said at Nate's birthday party, he almost got in a fight because of a joke he told. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. yes, we do a set on that show. And I was on Comic of the Month that night. Oh, cool. So I hope, I hope, okay. I hope we do it next time. But it's not like it was – because so after both those shows, we converged and did the late night mic at Mad Swede. But I want to hear about – well, maybe I have to ask what this so you can So I don't about. know the whole know. story, but she said he did a joke about – like. I think handicapped people and there were some people there that took offense to it <clears throat> oh. and some shit went down and oh. she said he almost got into a fight. Nate is not the fighting type. No, Nate's a good so. guy. He, Nate he's seems not like he pushes right it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but he's yeah. not trying but to yeah. get into a fight. Yeah, yeah. He's you know. like, you got some free weed. I would describe <laughs> Nate as yeah, jolly. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He says that every show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. not kidding. <laughs> Nate, just, <laughs> Nate just wants to get high and <laughs> tell some jokes. Or Oh, my God. He was amazing at the Crescent. They were some fucking hecklers. And Not he, hecklers, really, well, but they, they were, were just trying, talking yeah, and but, being yeah. loud. And he totally handled it. It was super cool. Shut to him see down. Him and we'd never seen him. At one that. point, he just like locked the door on the club. He's like, I'm he doing did, six literally. hours yeah, tonight. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> this, <laughs> this shit's going <laughs> He locked the door. <laughs> he did. It was so at fucking Crescent, funny. And he's like, I'm going six hours tonight. Pretty much fuck <laughs> all of you. Fuck <laughs> you guys. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That was, yeah awesome. that was, he was hilarious that night. And he just... There were people yeah. fucking around and kind they of killed it. Being disrespectful. Yeah. Really, yeah. People he were talking, told many like, people to shut, shut the, the fuck, fuck up. up. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, yeah. yeah. So, how do you handle hecklers, or have you so experienced I that? Been fortunate. Enough. So on Zoom, they just get muted. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The thing. It's <laughs> like the safest place to try to do comedy. Oh yeah. Because like it's, you, you, you can bomb whatever, but like. You're en- you're not feeling that soul sucking energy that's going to take you off and make yeah. you spiral out of control, yeah. uh, potentially. That's that was a little fire just said, but yeah. Uh, so I haven't had to deal with it a lot. I did a little more in Denver last week because oh. there's some kind of rowdy bars, and I'm not a row- like my jokes aren't dirty. I'm not like that's just not the comic I am. Yeah. Uh, not say like Dungeon I just it's just like it's just. I'm not usually yell- not that people are dirty comics yell at the crowd. I'm just saying like it was uh, it was just kind of tough, um, and they're just people just being loud and drunk. And eventually, I ended up just kind of calling it out to them. And, and I-, I wasn't totally like super mean or anything like that. I just uh, uh, basically turned and was like, "All right, I'm gonna pay attention to these people because fuck these guys over here." Yes. Yeah. And then someone over here was yelling at them, so I had the audience yelling at the audience to, nice. live, to listen because they were enjoying my comedy and they were laughing and I could see them. Yeah. And it was really funny. He's the guy's like. Oh, I'm going to keep talking. Oh, no matter what I do. Like, yeah, dude, we know. We've been here all night. And they got some laughs and some fun, and they kind of just shut up. Um, I, I haven't had to really deal with it. I'm, and I'm not really that good at confrontation in general, so it's weird. Yeah, I think it's Because, like, hard. I'm not on stage because I'm the most confident person in the world. I am yeah. in certain ways, like, feel, like, confident. But in other ways, like... I'm a pretty insecure person in a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I don't like want crazy. to. I don't so want to have comics that. comics are like yeah. super insecure, shy, but you're not yeah. shy if you're no. super extroverted. No, that's the thing is because a lot of comics are like, I'm introverted. A lot of them really are, but like, yeah. I'm not. It's just, I'm just not great you're at not, confrontation. Yeah. And I'm yeah. going to learn how to do that better because I want to be able to take care of that and handle that better. Um, it's amazing when it does happen. Yeah. When the person on stage is like, boom. And it worked. Like, when it yeah, worked. Yeah, when it yeah. worked. It was weird. I was on stage and I did see a comic in Denver who it was like the opposite. Someone wasn't even being that rude and they were just yelling at the audience <laughs> member. And the, uh, to the, point, the point where it was like super awkward. I'm wow. like, why are you doing this? You're the one freaking out right now. Please. <laughs> yeah. I'm up in like three Stop. or four comics. Like, please don't kill this energy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> So you travel for work yeah. and then find the the open mics. Yeah. Thing. By yourself. I feel like that's super gutsy. Yeah. I mean, when you're first starting out, I think that's what you have to do. Yeah, I'm like, what, I'm like, huh? What? Yeah. Just... I don't know. It seems scary. I'd never oh. do that. Yeah. I well, I, like at the times when I've like thought like maybe I could go and do comedy. And then we went to the Ido Comedy Fest 
or just any show and i see the comedian up there and there's this whole crowd waiting for to it. react and yeah. it's like no i can't fucking do that. <laughs> exactly. That's but when I it mean. works yeah and you got it's something exciting. planned and it works yeah. it's so incredible yeah and, i'm sure it is and yeah. so after i mean I, I guess we're still in the pandemic whatever but like i'm vaccinated da, 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 da. Yeah. we're on a different area of it now um i've since june uh actually maybe since it was in may i started doing live mics in town i've never done live mm. mics in oh. boise or anything so it's fun to just so it's been fun to just join yeah. the community and be yeah. a part of it now it was actually cool because i met a comedian his name is jeff shaw uh it's definitely he's definitely worth looking up um he'd love that as the line saying comic credit or is he local worth looking up uh <laughs> no but he's he... um uh, he's not uh he he, 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 <laughs> he travels a bunch though and he does live shows and i met him on zoom through flappers um and then after a zoom mic we were chatting he said some nice things about my set and i was like hey you should let me open for you ever come to boise and he's like well you gotta be a i'm like okay i didn't mean like feature i just mean like just do a set yeah. sometime in the thing and he's like all right well you know guess that's like five to ten minutes on page you do a set and you get to do it for an audience or whatever i'm like that'd be great then i connected him with lounge and then and then they okay did a show i with think them. i remember oh, seeing cool. him and then, so jeff shaw we went and saw chris shaw oh, okay so jeff shaw i think um it's more like rod stewart looking ish is he um yeah yeah oh, okay. <laughs> right now. so uh um i forget her name but the the actress that plays the the one that's like the meaner lady in glee like they always oh, say that she oh, looks like her. i always forget her name uh yeah i know you're talking yeah. i see her face I don't know uh, and her then name. he jokes about that people, i've never people, seen the show i'm sure he just so. about people talk about that um but he's so he does clean comedy he's got a drive yeah. special mm. he's really funny um, and then he was like, all right, well, I'm coming to town. So you're going to do that set this one week. And I'm like, okay. Wow. And then I'm like, I got to go do more live sets. Cause yes. most everything was on zoom for the last year. Yeah. And I pre zoom and there were some topics he didn't want to hit on. Cause like he does clean stuff. So I'm mm -hmm. like, all right, what can I do? Like I have stuff, but there wasn't, I didn't have a lot that wasn't about getting busted selling weed or I have some bits oh, yeah. stuff yeah. and microdoses. I realized okay. a lot of my stuff's about drugs. <laughs> um, and um, so then I got to do like five or six ish minutes, yeah. two nights in a row. One of those nights afterwards, we went to IHOP. He took me to late breakfast mm -hmm. and uh, and we did, went to comedy school for a couple hours with him. Oh, just cool. talking oh. joke structure and breaking stuff down and getting yeah. advice, stuff that you you know very hard to pay that pay for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was uh, that was a cool connection I made that wouldn't have happened That's without cool. Zoom. I'd have been on shows awesome. with real like professional comedians that I would have never been connected with if I wasn't doing it on Zoom. Wow. Yeah. Who's your bit biggest comedic influence? I don't know. If there's a specific person. I just really like a lot of comedians. Like I yeah. um um. Yeah, like like a really big, like Mark Norman, uh, yeah. Tom Segura. Yes. Um, Do you like Bert? Tomlin said, "Yeah, Bert Kreischer is fantastic." The whole gang. Oh, and um, mm -hmm. um, Jesus, why am I fucking up this name? I'm just brain farting right now. Oh, jeez, you have to cut this part. I'm saying brain farting. Dude, who just got out of fucking rehab and everyone was pissed off because he had a kid. Dalia. No, uh. no, they were pissed because he was dating kids. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, you can leave it in. You can yeah, part all right. You got out of rehab. Uh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, no, Brian I'm, Callen. No. no. Jesus Christ, uh, I'm such an idiot. King in the Sting. Uh, um, who the fuck? Who got out of rehab? Recently, I don't know. Oh, I'm Mulaney. Yes, you gotta fucking yes. edit some oh, of this out. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Yeah, no, okay, we need to that. every fucking John thing Mulaney. he's ever said yeah, has he's been, been fucking he great. Hilarious. No throwaway lines. Yeah, all fantastic. All of his jokes is that I think were fantastic. Uh, I don't know why I just brain farted. <laughs> um, any other day yeah. that we could have been like just fucking would have told you those right are away. Pretty much all the people we, we really yeah. like. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. yeah, I like Mulaney. I like this new in town special. Oh, did you see? Um, who's that really? Bargatze. Guy? Bargatze. Bargatze. Is amazing. Yeah, his new who's, special who's that is guy? great. Regan, did you see his new special? Oh, I did. Brian Regan. Oh, yeah, hair. but I saw most it of it. Hilarious. I got into the the one. I don't want to spoiler around the fucking thing, but when yeah. he was talking. Um, when he was talking about OCD. Was uh, just so yeah yes. yeah, right. yeah I and, I, I really and his books and shit yeah, yeah and he's yeah. describing all the things <laughs> yeah. Really yeah yeah oh my god yeah we like all the same stuff 
really. Smiley. I listen to Two Bears, One Cave every week. Yeah. yeah you listen yeah. to, oh, what do you feel about Bill Burr? Am I supposed to feel something? Well, I just wonder. <laughs> I, 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 like he's, I think he's really funny. Oh, you do? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah because like, I think a while ago, Chris there was struggled a while with I, him because he was so angry. And I'm like, I'm oh, listening yeah, to him, thing. dude. But yeah. I feel like he's working on it. He says I'm working on it. You know, like what I, mean? I like him now more than I ever yeah. did before. I thought he was just like yelling and no, I think he's you really, know, and uh, super anti woman, <laughs> and yeah, so and now I, uh, yeah, you know, really I actually like his com- comedy a lot more now. Yeah, you know, kind of. Yeah, I think it's I think it's really funny. It's fun how you can follow, and then some now. specials too. Like you like more some specials more than others, yeah, and true. that's okay. It's like we don't – I'm not saying you should give slack to anybody if you, they change. They don't like a thing. But, like, like people develop and they change. Yeah. Bands, music changes. Yeah, and you always sure. get mad because yeah. they change. Yeah, you want it's the old like, stuff. Fucking like, Metallica. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes exactly. you think that it can be totally valid. <laughs> it's just things change and people change. Yeah. Um, but, no, I think he's, I think he's hilarious. Yeah. Awesome. All right. You have any more questions? I don't. Do you have anything you want to tell us? How we can find you on social yeah. media? Do you have YouTube? Anything like yeah, that? Yeah, just um, on uh, on Instagram, just at Laugh Your Do you tape mm-hmm. your sets? Um, I do, and I post some sometimes on YouTube. Some clips. Okay. Like. okay. What's your YouTube page? Uh, just click the thing I just said. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so and laughyourlukoff dot com. Um, I try to keep updated with what shows I'm doing, and then there's a cl- there's a link there for uh, my YouTube stuff. Oh, nice! Lack your Luka Laugh off. your Luka Laugh off. Your Luka. com. Okay, Laugh your Luka off. Because I know com. when I got the email from you, it was, it was at Nuco Brew, and I looked yeah. that up, and there was that was my there. house company, and I keep okay. my email address because it's just the okay. You know, so I keep going. Um, gotcha. but yeah, Laugh your Luka off on Instagram, Laugh your Luka off dot com. If you're a comedian or someone who's thinking about working on comedy, want to do it in the easiest possible way currently uh and fun and connect with a lot of people and work on writing and stuff just just join displaced comedians on cool. facebook mm-hmm. if i don't accept your if i don't accept your uh your thing right away because it asks you a few questions i gotta click some stuff then message me i do keep an eye on on messages mm-hmm. message me nico, nico lukoff and just be like hey asshole i'm trying to join your fucking group <laughs> yeah. and then i'll look at it and i'll either hit yes or no so awesome. uh that's how that works Awesome. Well, thank you for being here tonight and in the studio. It's been a while, so thanks thanks for for coming over. Nico Lukoff, comedian, check him out. Check Uh, him out. We're going to have to check you out. Yeah, we're going to take a look. All right, so I'm signing out. I'm signing off. I'm Chris Adams. I'm Wendy Mosier. I'm Chris Adams. Hashtag get toasted. Stay toasted. And thank you for being here, Nico, tonight. Thank you.